Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I've been making videos on this channel for a while now, and one of the things that people seem to really like about the videos I make are the company breakdowns, particularly when it comes to like tech companies that, you know, maybe you have to be a bit more ingrained in that sort of space to understand things like Twilio or MongoDB. I've done breakdowns of those if you're interested, but those types of companies. And so I wanted to make more videos like that, just really going into detail, slight detail, I should say, in 20 minutes or less about tech companies, what they do, who their target market is, and you know, what their business actually does. How does it make money? That kind of thing. And so in today's video, we're going to take a look at one of the world's largest cybersecurity firms. That is CrowdStrike. Stock ticker for that one is CRWD. So if you go to the CrowdStrike website and you, you try and look at what this company does, actually the website is right behind me right there. You'll see it calls itself an endpoint protection platform, or in some documentation, it'll say an enterprise endpoint protection platform, which really does not, I guess, tell you what CrowdStrike does unless you're actually looking for a solution like CloudStrike. And actually, I'll bring it up on screen because you might not be able to make it out behind me. You can see that there is a full suite of products that are part of CrowdStrike's Falcon platform. These products do a whole variety of things. So we're going to talk about a few of these in a few moments, but yeah. What is an enterprise protection, enterprise endpoint protection platform? So I'd like to bring it back to, to you, right? So almost certainly throughout your time in using a computer, whether it be Windows, Mac, whatever it is, you've almost certainly at some point installed or dealt with antivirus software, whether that be from a company like McAfee or Norton. You know, you've had this software that scans your documents every once in a while, says, hey, you've been the all clear. It says, hey, I, you know, I found a bad piece of software. I've quarantined it check it out, let us know if it's actually a virus or if you want to put it back, that kind of thing. You've probably had that on your machine, whether it was given to you or, or, or uh, at your place of work. So what CrowdStrike does is it takes that idea of needing to protect your computer and it spreads it to the enterprise. Now, an enterprise could have thousands upon thousands of desktop computers that their users have, thousands and thousands of laptops, thousands of servers, thousands of just other little devices that are connected to the network. Now, running a, a McAfee-like antivirus on all of these systems is doable, but not really feasible. See, McAfee and, and, and those solutions that run on the device, they take up a lot of resources. And resources are, you know, relatively scarce, especially when you're dealing on, on the scale of thousands of machines. So if you have to install McAfee and it takes, say, 50% of the computer's resources and runs once a day, and that's 50% of your computer's resources that are gone at one time a day. But now you're doing it across the entire stack. Just think of how much you are wasting in resources by running that across all of your machines. So a solution like CrowdStrike says, well, instead of putting everything on the machine, why don't we just use a lightweight agent? And this lightweight agent is, it only takes up a little bit of space. It only takes up a tiny amount of resources on that machine but it reports everything back to a central system. And so that means that the security professionals at an organization can now monitor every machine that is connected to the network and see what files are passing through, monitor different traffic, set up firewall rules. Everything you would want to do as a security professional is now doable via this tiny little agent that is installed across your entire platform. But once you've got this tiny little agent installed, it can do a variety of things, and that all depends on, on your business. And CrowdStrike is designed to be modular. That means that if you want just to monitor traffic to check for you know, bad files or possible hacks, maybe some ransomware, you can just install that module. If you want to run firewall, you can grab that module. If you want advanced threat intelligence, you can grab that module. And what's cool about this is there's no additional installation, or, or I guess there is a little bit, but there's no like really burdensome process if you want to add on another piece to your Falcon suite. You can just deal with the sales team, get it added on, deal with some rates, but it's in there. You already have the software installed across all your computers. You can just turn this one on and begin working right then and there. So let's talk a little bit about some of CrowdStrike's bigger tools or the ones that you know are likely to draw more people through the door. The first up is a tool called Falcon Prevent. This one is the antivirus, anti-malware software portion of it. So this tool monitors traffic across the network. It monitors files. It monitors all kinds of things to check if there are viruses or malware or ransomware, anything like that, hidden amongst the company's files or in its network anywhere. 
And that, yeah, this tool is is pretty much comparable to your Norton or McAfee an antiviruses that you've likely dealt with yourself, except it's designed for, you know, just humongous scale. And one thing that all of these Falcon tools have in common is that they share this data throughout the entire CrowdStrike network. That means if, if you're a company, I'm just going to spit out random names. If you are Coca-Cola and you are a CrowdStrike customer, then the different types of, of viruses, possible malware that CrowdStrike detects on your platform, it can use that knowledge to help Pepsi. Again, I don't know if these are customers, but it can use that knowledge to help Pepsi and say, well, this is a bad file that we found elsewhere and we've noticed it in your network. Do you want to quarantine it? Do you want to do this? It uses that machine learning and artificial intelligence that it, it generates from all of its customers to piece together a more sort of cohesive antivirus solution. So yeah, Falcon Prevent is probably the key piece that every company is going to want when they install the, the, the Falcon suite of tools. You know, it is your antivirus. It's keeping your files secure. It's making sure you are protected from ransomware. And it's just alerting the business to any potential, uh, you know, bad things going on. Next up is a pretty cool tool. And uh, this one is called Falcon X. So Falcon X is, is a tool that's based on the premise that things will go wrong. You know, you cannot protect against every attack. You cannot protect, you can't protect against everything. Something will go wrong. It is inevitable. And what Falcon X does is it helps you automatically start to piece together why things went wrong and get resolution steps in place and, and get preventative measures in place for future sort of attacks of a similar nature. So this tool allows a company to start triaging issues earlier. It helps them get that triage done faster with, with machine learning. Again, it, it automates the report generation steps. It combines that with human intelligence so the security team at your business can get involved and, and add their own intellect into the mix. It pieces all that together. So yeah, you can get triaging started quicker, you can get it done faster, and you can help prevent future attacks. And there are more advanced, I guess, offerings from Falcon X if you wish to pay more. You can get daily intelligence briefings on, on different hackers from around the world, different hacking groups. So if a, if a particular hacking group is known to engage in certain attacks or is looking to target certain businesses, you would get that in your daily intelligence briefings. And then again, there is a next level that will uh, tailor that research towards your particular business. And that means that if you work in maybe creating, I don't know, on these, it's on the spot thinking is kind of difficult while I'm trying to record. But yeah, if you're specializing in creating a, a certain type of software, let's just say social media tools, you're a social media tool business. Well, CrowdStrike can tailor its sort of intelligence reports to, you know, these particular individuals are looking for social media tools. They're attacking them in this way. And so that your business can start to, I guess, prepare for attacks, prepare to start looking at those attack vectors and, and start resolving them before they become issues. The third tool I wanted to mention is Falcon's firewall management and a firewall for those that don't know is like a, a, a sort of service that sits in between the internet and your business. So you say, you know, if, if a connection is coming in and it's coming from this place, then block it. So maybe you want to block traffic from a particular country or a particular region because that region is known for, for hacking your particular type of business, block all that traffic, block traffic from this IP address. That's firewall, I guess, in a nutshell. And so Falcon has a firewall tool built into it. And yes, it is not as full featured as the likes of a hardware firewall from, from a company like Palo Alto Networks or various other firewall vendors. But what is cool about Falcon's firewall is that you've already installed the Falcon agent across all of your enterprise. So you don't have to do any additional legwork. You now have a firewall that can protect all your different endpoints, all your different machines. And your big businesses, they're gonna have firewalls everywhere. But if you are, you know, if, if you're just starting up and you're just trying to get into the security game and you're just trying to build this security tool set out, then Falcon's Firewall Management is a great little tool to, to get started. You've got it everywhere. It's already there. It's already ready to be configured. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, CrowdStrike's Falcon has a lot of tools. We've only talked about three of them. Let's throw up this slide again. As you can see, there's a lot. And the good thing about CrowdStrike's Falcon platform is that a business can come and really tailor its needs. You know, if it, if it needs one area more than others, it can just not pay for all those others. But also what's great about it is, is if it decides, if that business decides, you know, just taking Firewall, for instance, if it decides it doesn't want the Firewall tool right now, but then a couple of years down the line, it decides it does, it's super easy to just tack on because you already have the Falcon agent deployed across your entire network. So outside of Falcon, CrowdStrike do offer a bunch of different services as well, but these are, 
as you need them services. These are not like recurring revenue, massive cash generation businesses. These are, yeah, these are not what give CrowdStrike its 50 plus billion dollar valuation. These are just an if you need it kind of thing. If you are breached and you need assistance to get back on your feet, if you are breached and you need to understand why, if you are breached and you, yeah, you just need some help, CrowdStrike do offer those services. They send over a team that is fully versed in the CrowdStrike tooling, fully versed in security practices to help companies get fixed, get back on their feet, communicate to people that are affected, that kind of thing. It's a good little, I guess, tangential business to have, especially if uh, it helps bring customers in the door, which this definitely can. You know, if a, if a company does not have any sort of security software in place and they have a breach, they call up CrowdStrike to fix it. CrowdStrike's like, yep, we can come and fix it. By the way, while we're here, maybe you should set up this Falcon tooling. We'll help you get that done too. There you go. Another customer, another addition to that CrowdStrike flywheel. So on the topic of customers, it generally tends to be the big companies that are using CrowdStrike, at least right now. These are, you know, multinational companies with a lot to protect. They need a tool that can cover their entire suite of machines and servers and virtual machines and all that. So it tends to be the large, big, big mega companies that are using CrowdStrike right now, which is a good sign, right? That means that there's trust from these big enterprises. That means that, yeah, they're putting the trust of their business. They're putting the trust of even their customers in the hands of CrowdStrike. There are competitors as well. We've mentioned Norton. Norton do have their own product. It's called Carbon Black. McAfee has its own product. There's a company called Sentinel One that has its own product. So there's a lot of competing products in the space. There's also a lot of small firms that will, that will build products. There's also things like Palo Alto Networks that will uh, you'll install hardware-based firewalls. There's companies like FireEye to monitor network traffic. There are a ton of companies in this space, but CrowdStrike is doing well by having that small agent that can be deployed anywhere throughout the enterprise. All right, so let's talk about risks that CrowdStrike may face as a business. And we need to talk about this, especially because CrowdStrike is trading at such a massive premium. That means it's, it's pretty much priced for success. Its success is all but guaranteed by the market, especially when you, I mentioned it earlier in the video, but you consider that this company makes 1.3-ish billion dollars in revenues over the last 12 months and is trading at 55 plus billion dollars today. That is a huge price to sales multiple of 40 something. So yeah, it's priced for success, but there are risks that this business faces. So the first risk I wanted to talk about, and this is the one I'd consider most significant to a company like CrowdStrike, is that Security software is not something that anybody wants to buy. Security software is not something that, that you know, uh, when you're in a product meeting, how do we make our product better? No one is saying, let's go out and buy security software. No one wants to do that. And what that means is, is if no one wants to buy security software and they're only buying it out of necessity, it could become a cost-cutting item. As in, well, you know, CrowdStrike's going to charge us two, three hundred thousand dollars this year, but we can use this much smaller off option. It seems to protect us just as well. And they're only charging fifty thousand dollars. And these are numbers that are made up. But if you could save a quarter of a million dollars a year, especially if you need to cost cut as a business, maybe we're in a downturn, maybe things are going bad at your company. If you need to cost cut and save some money, you might look at security software as a place to cost cut. It's not something that the customer ultimately sees. It's something that can tend to be very expensive. And so what that leads to is the commoditization of the business. So if CrowdStrike has to compete on pricing, that could be a, a very bad thing going forward. You know, obviously it's very expensive to put together teams of security experts. It's very expensive to build software. It's very expensive to build software like CrowdStrike is building. And so if they have to cost cut because others are competing on price and offering similar solutions at a much lower price and offer the same benefits as CrowdStrike does, that could be a problem over the long term. Now, CrowdStrike mitigates this by having a excellent flywheel. I mentioned it earlier. This flywheel means that as more customers come on, the platform as a whole gets more data to use in its machine learning libraries. It gets more data to, to piece together the entire world sort of network traffic and, and bad files and malicious actors. And this adds to this flywheel that means you can't really leave CrowdStrike CloudStrike. I keep saying cloud. You can't really leave CrowdStrike once you're in there. And yeah, just by being a CrowdStrike customer, you're able to benefit from all that data that's generated from all the other customers. And obviously it's anonymized data. They're just using it to build, build models that are able to detect bad actors, malicious files, that type of stuff. But if you're able to benefit from that sort of 
worldwide knowledge. That's a good thing for your business. And that's what's going to help CrowdStrike mitigate that risk. Another risk that CrowdStrike faces, and this one kind of is mitigated by that same flywheel, but this one is uh, it's something that we've seen actually fairly recently, and that is a large-scale attack on one of its customers, or much worse, a large-scale attack on the Falcon agent itself. Now, we saw this with SolarWinds recently. SolarWinds is a company that's based out of Austin, stock ticker, I believe it's SWI. This is a company that also deals with software or security as a whole, and they have a similar sort of tool that was deployed in a bunch of places at the government, a bunch of companies, that kind of thing. And that tool was hacked, which meant that the attackers now had access or, or could do stuff at all these different places that had this software installed. And that led to around about, I think, a 40% drop in SolarWinds stock in a couple of days, which was you know quite a chop off. I mean, if, if you were an investor and you didn't suspect something like this, that would have been heartbreaking to wake up to. And it's only just starting to recover from that. I think this took place a year or so ago, but it's starting to recover from that, at least in its stock price. But there's no telling that a similar, if a similar thing happened to CrowdStrike, could it recover? If a similar thing happened where an attacker, say at a nation level, because that's where this is likely to happen, if, I'm going to pick on Russia here, if Russia gained access to the Falcon agent and was able to inject some sort of code through it that now covered or attacked every single computer that's connected to the Falcon agent, that would be a bit of a problem. That would cause CrowdStrike to, well, as you would expect with something like SolarWinds, it would cause its stock to drop 40, 50%. That might even be the end of the business as a whole if people lose complete trust in it and start switching away. So that is a big risk that CrowdStrike faces. But again, I think it's kind of mitigated by this network effect. They are able to see different attacks across all these different companies that have things installed. So it's something that they're able to monitor and hopefully keep on top of and, and prevent Falcon from ever having a breach of its own. So let's talk a little bit about financials. As I've mentioned throughout, this company does around about $1.3 to $1.4 billion in revenues, trailing 12 months. It is growing, though, at 70 plus percent per year, which is why it's commanding that like $55 billion range valuation. I did a little bit of reading as well to figure out, you know, how big is the total addressable market for a company like CrowdStrike? How, how big could this truly become if they were to capture it all? And so there's this post, I'll, I'll throw it up on screen, and it talks about how damages from cyber attacks are in the $6 trillion range this year and are expected to grow to $10.5 trillion by 2025. That is a number that is unfathomable can't possibly comprehend what $10.5 trillion in damages looks like. But yeah, that's a good market for CrowdStrike to go after, right? If they're able to say, look, $10.5 trillion is what the global economy stands to lose. We are charging X amount. This will protect us from losing that much. And really, it's just a drop in the bucket. And what would that amount be? I put it at 1%. If you say the total addressable market for CrowdStrike is 1% of the potential damages from cyber security or from cyber attacks, that puts their total addressable market at somewhere around $105 billion per year. Now, you could argue that that total addressable market is maybe 2% to 5%, you know, maybe it is 200 plus billion or 500 billion down the line. But for now, I think it seems fair to say that CrowdStrike has a total addressable market that's around about $100 billion. So can they get it all? Probably not. But if this company is able to continue to grow, continue to grow that flywheel out, there's no reason to doubt that over the next dec or decade or so, CrowdStrike could become a, a, a 10, 15, $20 billion revenue generating business, you know, by the year 2028, 20, 29, 30 years. So yeah, I think that $20 billion in revenues is definitely doable by the year 2030. But now comes the question of that, that multiple sort of, of contraction, because obviously you're not going to still be paying 40 times sales for this business in nine years time. And that's where it starts to get a little bit questionable. Will this still be a business where, you know, they can command a 10 to 15 price to sales ratio? In which case, a $20 billion business at, at that price, you're looking at of, of at least, what, 10 times a $200 billion business, you're looking at four, five Xing your money there over nine years. But that's a, a tremendous return, right? You're not going to get those types of returns easily, but that's a tremendous return if you had the conviction in this name. What's more likely, though, is, is if this business was actually firing on all cylinders and managed to get to that $20 billion in revenue by 2030, you're probably looking at a 5 to 10 price to sales ratio, which does bring that down to maybe, maybe tripling your money. Maybe, you know, if, if it was a $20 billion, 5x, that would be double your money. This would be a 100-ish a billion dollar company and trading at 55 today 
you're only looking at 2x in over nine years. That's where it becomes a bit of an issue for me. But if you have the conviction in the name and, and believe it has tremendous growth ahead of it, I could definitely see why you'd buy it. For, so for me, this is a bit too pricey of a business, especially when you consider the current price multiples and that that multiple will contract. This is a bit too pricey of a business. Now, I don't doubt that CrowdStrike has you know that tremendous potential. I still believe that CrowdStrike will go on to be a, a big business in the future, but I just don't know that I'm going to get the returns that I would like out of it for the risk that I'm taking at this point by paying 40 times sales. And so what I thought to myself is, is how much would I pay? And it's around about that 230 price range. If this stock dropped on, say, macroeconomic news or a broader market downturn, if this stock dropped back down to around about 230, I would consider buying it. There's a lot of opportunities out there, so I'm not going to be butthurt if this company continues to grow. Obviously, I hope it does for the sake of people watching this video that might already be invested. I hope it does continue to grow and that you get an outsized return going forward. But for me, I'm going to just sit on the sidelines, at least for now, and, and wait it out and maybe see if I can get in at a better price some point in the future. But yeah, CrowdStrike overall is an excellent business. It's got some great stuff going on. It's got some great tooling. It's got a great way of getting it out there. This just like cloud-based security solution. And yeah, everything looks great about CrowdStrike with the exception of its current price to sales multiple, at least for me. I'd like to know what you think though. So if you do own CrowdStrike today or have any interest in the company or perhaps followed it, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think of CrowdStrike, what you love about it, what you hate about it. And yeah, let us know as well when you actually bought CrowdStrike. I bet there's some people watching this video that have made a killing in this stock. So definitely brag below and let us know. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Have a good one.